Let's have a look at the procurement sourcing purchase policies. There's a policy which is the requisition control rule and on the requisition control room rule you can control um, at the workflow submission time a set of fields that'll get validated. You'll see that I've added one here um, so this is not in standard code in, in AX 2012 so let's have a walk through how we might add an additional um, field to the requisition control rule if you want to have additional validation set up on a purchase requisition. So let's go and have a look at the purchase requisition itself. So I'm going to go over to a purchase requisition and I'm going to open up the requisition and we'll have a look at the details on the lines of the requisition and so I have a bunch of fields here um, and so I've got like order, this is my description so I'm going to fill something in let's say for example we want to enforce the external item number um, so that people fill that in as the vendor's item number so I can right click in AX and hit personalize this is going to tell me the field ID, so it's external item ID, which is on the purchase requisition line. So once we have that information, we can go across, I'm just going to close this purchase requisition document, we can go across to the application uh, development environment. So this is a developer task so I'm going to go through the process that, that you can see it here but this is something that you want to control so that you can control the source code, use uh, version control. So this is the purchase requisition line table so the field that we had which was external item ID and so the rule is set up in this table which is the purchase rec control submission parameters. Now there's a method on the table which is called initialize records so you'll see in my case it's already modified. So I'm going to add another line to the code here. So I'm going to copy the last line and I'm going to put in um, this external item ID in place here. So we'll say external item ID that's the field that we want to add as the additional rule. So I've made one uh, line of code change. So at this stage um, that's all we need to do but we need to go and reset up the policy. So that's the code change, it compiles so that's okay. So I'm going to go back and from a functional perspective now go and set up the policy. So I'll go into my purchasing policy and in my procurement policy so I have the purchase requisition control rule. I'm going to retire the existing rule and then I'm going to create a new rule. At this point it'll initialize the uh, fields that we have available. So now I've got a field which is external item number. So at this point I could say well this field is now required um, and so now it's a valid configuration in my purchasing policy. So I'm going to save my policy now and let's see if it takes effect. So I'm going to go to my procurement and sourcing, I'm going to go to my requisitions this is the requisition we were working on and if I have a look at the line details we'll see that we don't have an external item number so if I try to submit this it'll give me an error that says external item number must be specified so that's the new rule in place um, so I can of course edit that and say x345 um, at which point it should allow me to submit to workflow which it does. So that's how we can modify the uh, requisition control rule. Um, the key to it is that you want to update the initialize records method on the purchase rec control submission parameters table and update that for the field that's in the purchase rec 